Good afternoon, Mount Hermon Church family. Uh, I hope this devotional finds you doing well. I miss you, uh, but glad that we can do this on a weekly basis. And I want to be an encouragement to you today. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 9. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, Paul is discussing the freedom that we have in Christ to, to eat certain foods or, or what we can drink. And he's having this discussion. I just want to specifically look at three verses and then encourage us how to practically uh, do what Paul is doing here in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Paul is arguing that he would not want to put anything in the way of sharing the gospel. He says this in verse 12, Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Paul had been saved by the grace of God, and by the power of Jesus Christ in his life. In fact, in Romans 1, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power within me. And so here he says, you know what, I, I'm not going to put an obstacle in the way. Why? Because his goal and his mission was to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. In verse 16 he says, For if I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Woe to me. I, I, should, be, uh, I should be punished. There should be a punishment. I, I am inclined. I am required. I have to preach the gospel. It is his driving heart motive. And so he says, I'm not going to put an obstacle in people's way. Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. And then in verse 17, he says, for if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am still entrusted with the stewardship. This is a mind boggling idea that God himself before the foundations of the earth, knew that Jesus Christ would have to come, God in the flesh, and die for us and be buried and raised again the third day. Why? Because man would rebel against God. And so because of that, God knew this. And when he sent his son, Christ, to die for our sins, to be buried and raised again on the third day, he entrusted us with a stewardship. God said, here is the mode for the gospel to go out. I'm going to give it to those that have been changed, have been made new by this incredible gospel. Paul says, listen, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to put any obstacle in the way from the gospel going out. He's also going to say, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. And then thirdly, he's going to say, you know why? Because I have a stewardship to share the gospel. And so I want to encourage us. I want to challenge us today. How are you sharing the gospel? I know if you've been listening to our sermon on Sunday, we had an opportunity a couple weeks ago to just stop in the middle of the sermon and share the gospel as uh, with your spouse or share it with your family or call somebody to share the gospel. I was even challenged as I've talked to different people about funerals in these different days and how difficult it is to have a funeral. I was reminded that folks, listen, we should be sharing the gospel with our own kids. One of the most difficult things as a pastor is when I get to a funeral and people look at me and say, wait a second, I, I know maybe dad or mom or, or this loved one went to church. I know that I think they were baptized, but I, I'm not sure if or when they ever got saved. Folks, we need to be sharing the gospel with our, our kids, our loved ones, and telling them this is how, how the change came about. So I'm going to encourage you today. I'm going to show you. I know if you've come to Mount Hermon uh, very often, especially during our study of Galatians, I have walked you through this. Uh, Marshall has walked you through in videos on the three circles. But I'm going to show you how I share the gospel, and then I'm going to give you a challenge at the end of this video. And so I just want to remind you that, as we've been studying the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve were born in the garden. That's my great artistic ability right there. Adam and Eve were born in the garden. They were created and placed in the garden, I should say. God created them from the dust of the ground, and then he took Eve out of Adam's rib. And they walked with God. What an incredible opportunity they had to walk with God. God was their Father, they walked with him. 
What an incredible blessing. But God gave him one command. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we know Eve was deceived. She gave the fruit of Adam and he took it and ate. And immediately everything changed. They fell where God was no longer their father. God was the judge. And all of a sudden they began to walk and they realized they were naked and they were cast out of the garden and there was a separation from God. And all of mankind was born into sin for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. We will die in our sin. And if we die in our sin for the rest of eternity, we will be paying for that sin as God will judge us. But God in his mercy sent Christ. Christ came as we just celebrated Easter. Christ came. He died on a cross and took the, the wrath of God on him for our sins he shed his blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Christ shed his blood. And he was buried, but he didn't stay in that grave. He rose again the third day. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 1, all we have to do is repent and believe. And if we will repent and believe, the Bible says that God will make us new. He will be king again. He was king here for Adam and Eve. They were to obey and follow him. But if we will repent and believe, he will become our king. And we can walk with God. God will be our heavenly father. We will be children of God. And as we walk with God, we declare that by baptism. And we get a become a part of a local church and we encourage one another and we equip one another and we keep each other accountable as we walk with God looking for the day. So the Bible said Abraham realizing that this was not his country. He was a citizen of another country looking for the day that we will spend eternity with God. And so when we share the gospel, this is really what we're doing. We're telling people, this is where I was in my sin. I remember as a young boy, here's my testimony, at six, seven years old, sitting in a chapel service in our Christian school, and as the pastor was preaching, I realized that I was a sinner and that my sin would send me to hell. And I remember sitting there, I didn't go forward, I, I, I was sitting there at the end of the row, and I still remember where I was sitting, and I remember that I was a sinner and I was in need of a savior. I repented of my sin and I cried out to God and said, God, you know what? I Please forgive me for my sin. I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven. But here's what I know. Christ changed me and I became a new creation. It's not that I'm perfect, but God has given me victory in my battles against sin and in my walk with him, I see the victory. I see the conviction when I act out in pride or bitterness or anger. And God has changed me. And now I walk differently than I did down here. My life has been changed. My goals have been changed. And as Paul says, he went from Saul who was murdering Christians to the one that says, you know what? I will give up my freedoms, the things I could do so that I will preach the gospel. People will listen to me. I have a stewardship and woe is me if I don't preach the gospel. Folks, this is a great opportunity and a great time that we should be sharing the gospel. And so I want to encourage you this week in two ways. One, how are you sharing the gospel? I would encourage you to do this. Take a moment and videotape yourself sharing the gospel. Maybe you put it on social media and say, hey, here's how Christ changed me. Here's how I got saved. What an opportunity for you to share your witness and your testimony. Just one or two minutes. Marshall can do it in 15 seconds. He has a video on how to share your 15 second testimony, but just one or two minutes. Here's, here's where I was in my sin. Here's how I realized that Christ had come 
and died and was buried and rose again the third day to save me and how I repented of my sin, put my faith and trust in Christ, and here's how he changed me. And so here's what I want to challenge you to do this week. Share that testimony with someone and maybe even just record a video of you sharing the gospel and put that out on Facebook and say, hey, if you want to know anything else about this, send me a private message. I'd love to talk to you about how Christ saved me. What an opportunity that we have to share the gospel, to tell people of the peace that we have in our walk with God and how we are not fearful because we know that our Father is in control. I also want to encourage you. I heard this idea uh, today on a, a Zoom call I had with some pastors. But another way to share the gospel is maybe you just put out on social media or send out a text to 10, 15, 20 of your friends or email them and say, hey, listen, I'm going to be praying today for 30 minutes. Is there some way I could pray for you? Send it to your neighbors. Send it to your coworkers. Listen, I'm going to be praying. Now, what, what kind of prayer request could I pray for you for? And just put it out there and see how God would use that as you pray for people and you share the gospel and give you opportunities to present the gospel to those that are struggling. Would you be willing to do that? What an opportunity that we have to do that this week. Let us pray. God, thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the way that you've changed our lives. And God, I pray that we would be willing to maybe make a video and put it out on social media or just make a video and send it to some of our friends and say, hey, I just want to share the gospel. I want you to know what I believe. But God, I pray that this week we would, like Paul, say, you know what? We're not going to let any obstacle come in the way of our sharing the gospel. And yes, we're social distancing. And yes, we're separated from people. But we have the opportunity through social media and other platforms to share the gospel with people. God, would we be faithful to do that today? And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you. Share the gospel with somebody this week. God bless.